Yep, I think we're live. Yeah. Hi, folks. Uh, welcome, everyone, to yet another uh, session of the Product Tear Down series from the Product folks. Thanks to everyone uh, for you to choosing to spend your time on a Sunday evening with us. And uh, this is just the fourth edition of our Tear Down, and the support we receive from the community is amazing. And I also look forward uh, to enjoy the event with you. Uh, before we kickstart the event, uh, giving a short introduction about the community for the folks who are just uh, joining in you. Uh, product Folks is a volunteer driven community of product managers, product enthusiasts, and aspirants. And there are a bunch of ongoing initiatives from the Product Folks apart from the Product Teardown event, like uh, Learn PM with .me, a curated set of free resources on product management. For people who are trying to pursue a career in product management, this, this would be a great starting point. And uh, we have insertjob.club. Uh, it's an um, APM. It's an APM program. It's a community-driven APM program. So please check out. And also we have product conversations where we have insightful discussions with product leaders on various aspects of product management. Uh, we also have founder stories where we have conversations with founders uh, about building great product companies and uh, all of these sessions what we do virtually are recorded and available in our youtube channel so check this out so uh, i will hand it over to suhas to take us further from here awesome awesome thanks so much so and uh, we already have more than 50 people joining in live so thank you everyone for spending your sundays with us and hopefully the next 60 to 90 minutes will be amazing it will be an amazing learning experience for all of us um, also, today we have with us Naveen, Anshul, and Sanship from Farmazy. So, thank you once again, guys, and welcome to this edition. Um, you guys could quickly say hey to everyone here. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, just like Sulai uh, shared, I think he shared a little bit about the community. I'll share a little more about the agenda for today, uh, about the Teardown Initiative. And um, yep, then we get started. So, the Teardown Initiative, as you guys would have noticed, we've done three earlier with um, uh, you know companies like Dunzo. Uh, the idea here is can we recreate um, the learning experience by actually working on a problem statement and for this edition uh, we have uh, the folks at FarmEasy joining us. Uh, most of y'all who are here today have taken part in this so you all know a little more about the problem statement but let's listen today to the discussions or the the problem set uh, the solutions to these problem statement that was shortlisted by by the team here and hopefully it'll be a good learning experience also all the best to the finalists i think exciting prizes up for grabs and uh, yeah for the rest of us it will be a good learning experience so before i call on the finalists sharing a little bit about the problem statement as well as our panelists or our mentors that have joined us today um problem statement for folks who are viewing this for the first time uh, you know about farm easy but for this particular um, for this particular teardown we've selected a topic which um, um, which tackles two main things um, by definition we know that a lot of consumers uh, chronic consumers have multiple recurring medications so you know remembering to take these doses on time and to planning and ensure that there's sufficient stock is what we're going to be tackling here so that's where just to give you a little more context on the solutions that you see um yeah but uh, without further ado uh, we have with us anshul naveen and sanchev from the team uh, anshul uh, has been with farmazy for quite some time now uh, he joined them as an apm uh, he's a graduate from iitd and currently a pm on their team so yeah we'll be hearing more about his journey but quick intro from your side anshul Hey, hi. Uh, yeah, I have been with you for about three years now uh, in the product role, and uh, I've been taking care of the post order experience for our customers. Yeah, that's it. And, uh, and uh, I mean, really cool stuff with the Dex guys. I mean, they were quite competitive and quite amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks, Anshul. And yeah, just before we were discussing, I think Anshul also mentioned that, you know, it's super hard choosing the three. So we have a little interesting initiative in between called Product Sparks, where they'll be sharing interesting ideas from the rest of the deck. So stay tuned for that. And thanks again for joining in, Anshul. Uh, next up, we have with us Naveen. Naveen's been with a bunch of companies before this. He's worked with Zeta, he's worked with Flipkart, and currently on the products team at um, FarmEasy. Naveen would love to hear a little more from your side on the kind of things that you're doing at Farmazy. Hey, thanks. Hey, hi, hi, everyone. Uh, I think, yep. Uh, 
pretty interesting uh, process i think uh, for us it's new uh, and i think uh, all all of us had a great time uh, coming up with the problem statement and then uh, engaging with the community then going through the decks uh, uh, really fun uh, uh, about myself yes i think uh, suhas pretty much covered i've uh, uh, started off my pm career with flipkart and then uh, have been with a bunch of stuff uh, seen b2c b2b fintech e-commerce uh, uh, now with farmeasy for about a year now started off with payments and now i take care of search and personalization charters here at farmeasy super stoked uh, uh, to looking awesome. for a great great learning session here awesome awesome thanks so much navin um, we'll just quickly write and we'll quickly call you back for sharing a little more on the scoring but before we do that um, uh, announcing our third mentor um, sanchev thank you so much for joining us Sanchev currently heads the consumer products at Farmeasy. He's had a bunch of experiences with Swiggy, with the Red Bus, um, with Airtel in the past. So Sanchev would love to hear a little more about the journey and how it is like being a consumer product head at um, at Farmeasy or heading the consumer vertical at Farmeasy. Once a week. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Hey everyone, uh, and. Uh, Welcome everyone, and uh, really, really ex super excited to see so much of participation and and so many so many people uh, here having joined the session on a crisp and a bright Sunday evening. In fact, I can see a few of uh, our colleagues here. So, so hey, hey everyone. Uh, talking a bit up about myself, I I started my journey in the year two thousand five. Very typical journey I had. Uh, I I. And I graduated uh, with MEC, MEC engineering. Uh, worked in IT for a couple of years. Uh, didn't didn't find that uh, very very interesting or very long term. Uh, did did MBA, started brand sales, marketing, product marketing, and then finally product management. And this is where I I am right now. Uh, been Farmeasy for over a over a year and a half now, and uh, pretty, pretty interesting times. Uh, we are doing some solid uh, work. Uh, we are doing some interesting uh, health, healthcare uh, stuff in the, in the healthcare domain, and uh, super excited to meet, meet and interact with everyone. And look forward to the sessions. Awesome, awesome. Thank you once again, guys. I think you know taking your time to actually spend with the community and help them through this. This has been super interesting for us. So thank you for taking your time. I hope the next ninety minutes will be as interesting for you guys as it is for the rest of us. So. Yep. Without further ado, time to get started. Um, as always, I think we have like a wheel of names that runs around. So while I introduce, I hope all our um, finalists are already here. Yeah, I can see that. So guys, I'll quickly share my screen and let's get started with this. Um, let me know when you can see my screen. You can see it now. Not yet. Yep. Okay. Awesome. If anyone could just prompt me if they can see it. You guys can see it, right? Yeah. Awesome. 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 Yeah. So uh, we are getting started on this. For folks who joined us earlier, seen this earlier, but we're quickly going to shuffle, and then these are our finalists for today. Um, and uh, running the spinning the wheel now. <laughs> Awesome. So, Balaji, you're up first. If you could please raise your hand, I'll call you up on stage and you could quickly share. Yes, you're up. We can hear you, but we cannot see you yet. Okay, awesome. We can hear you. Hi, Balaji. And uh, I think uh, we briefed you on, on the process. You know all about it. It's going to be a 10 plus 2. Ten minutes for you to present. I'll prompt you a minute before two two minutes for them to share a little more, you know, question you on the on the slides. And yep, without and then nothing complicated, but all the best. You would spend thirty seconds on your intro, saying that hey, what do you do? Very very briefly, and like make sure that you suggest the assumption, the risk, and the problem statement in the first two minutes. You know, a little more. Yeah. All the best. Your time starts now. So uh, is my audio fine and the screen visible? Yep, all good. Cool. So, hi all. Uh, this is Balaji Rao. I I'm doing my uh, third year of uh, information technology at IIIT Gwalior, which is in Madhya Pradesh. So, I've been involved with digital products for uh, about uh, an year now. Uh, 
I, I actually I started with uh, web development and after that design and now uh, with products. So we'll be looking on this uh, subscribe and never miss a dose of your mix. Uh, so let's get right into it. So uh, more, more on the objectives of the teardown is like we'll be looking on the opportunities uh, to explore more on the subscriptions and the reminders of meds for the users to enhance their user experience at the same time increasing their uh, usage experience with the app. And uh, for all of this, the North Star, uh, what, what I have uh, uh, assumed is like uh, to make the farm easier, singular platform to cater all uh, for the all uh, users healthcare. Uh, healthcare needs. So, in the use case and focus, we'll be looking at how uh, how we can drive the replenishment of stocks at the same time, uh, reminding the users to take doses on time. So, uh, uh, we'll be starting with uh, customer types, up that user stories, and we'll be uh, talking about subscription reorders. There's a thin line between subscription and reorders. Uh, I, I call reorders as autumn, uh, like a manual. Uh, 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 subscription and subscription as uh, uh, automated reorders. So we'll be seeing after that reminders. So uh, on the classification of users, we have two types of uh, thing which I have taken into consideration. One is based on the who is ordering, and one is which you can see on the left side. Uh, it, it might be the uh, patients themselves or the caretakers. If the uh, patient is not tech savvy, then uh, actually a, 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 the caretaker from their side can actually do that. And uh, based on the ordering behavior, we have one-time orders, which can be uh, for cold, cough, and stuff like that. And on the other hand, we have recurring orders uh, where uh, actually the patient is suffering from long-term uh, chronic diseases, where it, it could be like arthritis, diabetes, and stuff like that. So a little bit uh, thing uh, on the user story uh, for the subscriptions. As a caretaker of my mother, I, 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 want, uh, I want to be able to replenish uh, the med stock. Uh, regularly so that my mother can have her meds regularly so on the second user story for the reminders as a busy diabetic student uh, patient I, I want myself to be reminded of taking my meds on time so that i can uh, take care of my health properly okay. so uh, on the research part most of my research was on uh, secondary research where i uh, read a lot of uh, user reviews uh, on place for both of pharmacy and uh, other competitors apart from that i've read some abstract of research papers on chronic diseases as well. So apart from that, also I've uh, taken some sources from the Slack AMA. So as we see that 80% uh, 80, 80 of the older adults have at least one chronic disease. In India, about uh, 200 million people have this. So uh, this also re resonates with the data that upwards of 90% of ordering base of pharmacy is for uh, chronic diseases. So it's, it's, it's a very important thing because uh, these orders have a long term value, so it, it, they have a longer timeline. At the same time, the bag value is also very high. On the demographic side, uh, I, I, I was able to uh, uh, find out that the average age of a customer is 35 years, and the average age of user is 50 years. Uh, so, uh, the difference between the customer and the user is like a customer who is uh, paying for the product and user is uh, who is the end user of that particular uh, uh, item which is bought. Right? So uh, 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 coming on to the su subscription play, we'll be looking on like uh, uh, how to introduce, uh, how we are going to introduce subscription information phase. At the same time, how, how we'll be introducing the subscription uh, flow where we can actually uh, show the user that there's extra value and savings in that process. After that, we'll be looking on uh, how we can manage this subscription because managing is a great task. Uh, which uh, humans uh, really really require. So uh, based on the monthly calendar, we'll be checking on that. So after that, we'll be looking on the personalized push notification. And for all of these, we'll be assuming that the orders made during subscription or reorder, we'll be using the pre previously submitted uh, prescriptions for the uh, previous orders. Uh, on the reorder thing, uh, already the app has a reorder uh, mechanism, but I, I think it's uh, discovery can be made much more uh, uh, easier. So on the first solution, uh, pre presently the refills takes place on a manual uh, executive call. Uh, what I think is like an information base to educate the users about the benefits of the subscription is really uh, necessary to uh, uh, make them realize what exactly the offerings are. At the same time, also uh, showing them how the subscription works on a step-by-step -step process, like uh, from the selecting the item to receiving meds on time, at the same time offering them some top categories to uh, uh, check out uh, uh, to start their subscriptions. 
uh, 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 coming on to the subscription flow, uh, the main thing that I wanted to uh, address over here is that using the same number of steps that one time orders takes place, I wanted to uh, add the same for the subscriptions as well. So apart from that, uh, I, I, I also kept in uh, mind to show the user uh, what is in it for them. Uh, it's a 5%, uh, it, it can be variable, uh, but I have assumed a 5% discount. So uh, also I have followed some design patterns to make it more easier. So it's like a uh, product, uh, it is straight forward that they can select the subscription or they can take a one time, they can uh, ch uh, check out and stuff like that. On the managing subscription as uh, we, we are, uh, generally juggle through a lot of things every day. So uh, actually we have those reminders on calendar, but uh, I don't think those are that uh, efficient because it, it is always a messy kind of thing. So uh, a separate subscription management section uh, which uh, re records the subscription month on month. Also this uh, provides the, the user the capability to uh, alter their sub subscription orders, their uh, delivery frequency, the date, and th they can cancel it as well. The main thing that I have kept in mind for this uh, particular thing is the flexibility and the simplicity uh, uh, for the user. And next is like uh, uh, personalized push notification, reaching out to those right people at the right time in their customer journey is really important. So uh, once the user orders the medicines, it's like order uh, 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 a push notification saying that you can save 5% from your next order onwards if you subscribe. The second thing is like it has been one month since you have ordered uh, so and so. Uh, are you running out of it? So you you can subscribe and get five percent of this. So this one month can be uh, uh, altered based on what type of meds they have taken. If it is uh, a simple ta tablet strip, can be seven days, ten days, or stuff like that. So uh, I have a prioritized based on the implementation ease and the impact. So what I see is like starting off with uh, introducing this particular concept to the users using a subscription uh, subscription page. The reasons I mentioned over, uh, and after that, I think uh, after uh, introducing this information page, then uh, getting onto the flow and the managing subscription is a is, is a support kind of thing where it it enhances the user experience with a lot of subscriptions to manage. And after that, I think this uh, personalized push notifications also is a supporting. Uh, fa factor at the same time driving those users to uh, push them at the right time to trigger that kind of a subscription activity. So next uh, after subscriptions we are looking at reminders solutions in the use cases we are uh, checking on reminders to med friends. Uh, I I'll be letting you know more, more about what med friends uh, what I mean by med friends. The second thing we'll be sitting, uh, seeing about the fitness band vibrating reminders and the, uh, in the last one, we'll be say, seeing about the daily set of reminders for symptoms. Uh, basic reminders are already present on the app, but what I think is like uh, 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 there are things we can build on top of it to enhance the usage and customer experience. So the first kind of implementation is like reminders to caretakers. So the uh, uh, at the time of taking the meds, the uh, patient might be in sleep or away or, uh, with, or uh, the phone can be in silent. Uh, just for a story, uh, one of my father's friend, uh, he uh, uh, actually he has a chronic disease. He fainted in the room once, and he, he forgot to take the medication. So most of their friends were looking for him, uh, searching for him for the long time, and they found him in the room uh, fainted. So it, it's a very dangerous situation to be in. So uh, actually, what uh, this feature does is like a uh, med friend is notified if patient doesn't put off the reminders and if, if, if it get auto snoozed for two times. So if, if he's missing the reminder for two times uh, it, uh, at that particular time, it, it might, uh, it, it will trigger a notification to their med friends and th they can either call him or uh, manually go and check with him personally. It's very simple, add the med friend and you set them and uh, if, if, if this happens, uh, then they get the notification. The next step is like daily, uh, Check reminders uh, using the chat code, which is a uh, 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 like I, I, I uh, it, it is like early identification and expression of symptoms is very much required before things go worse. So uh, five percent of the revenue contribution is from diagnostics. Uh, this is what I, I I was able to figure out from this back in May. So I I think this metric can be shot up by recommending patients with proper uh, consultation services at the right time. So how this is introduced is like every night or uh, uh, based on the when the user is active generally, uh, it, we can ask him to 
take uh, uh, go to the health assistant and uh, uh, take a daily checkup what happens is like uh, it, it we ask like uh, uh, how we feeling today at the same time these uh, symptoms are based on the uh, uh, his medication it's personalized to his medication next up is like mali so sorry your time is up i would uh, request you to even though like i, I know very interesting point but uh, would love if you could wrap this up here like last sure. point sure so uh, is this my last slide Yeah, this would be your last slide, but you have thirty seconds to just wrap up in case you have some points. Thirty. So, in in the last thing, I think the fitness band has uh, healthcare IT devices on rise. So, that this can be a new pro product category. And the main thing which I feel is important is like we'll be able to uh, uh, with more data, we'll be able to help uh, the uh, the patients with better end-to-end -end healthcare services. It is like a simple uh, toggle where they can do that, and this is how it is. and uh, yeah uh, 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 thank you so much i'm open to uh, get into detail of any feature or strategy yeah and thank you awesome awesome thank you so much sorry i have to cut you off but yeah. over to navin anshul and sanchev in case you hey hey balaji thanks uh, thanks for the lovely presentation uh, mm -hmm. I, i had a question and wanted to dive on the reminders uh, piece uh you mm -hmm. mentioned uh, one around the reminder communication to the to the uh, consumer as well as to his friend right uh, a med buddy yeah. yeah. uh what do you think would be a would be a, a issue of doing that or or a flip side of doing that or are there any uh, cons of this uh, this uh, approach or this so I'll... uh one thing i have observed is like lot of uh, uh patients feel that uh, they are acting as a burden on their healthcare uh, people uh, that is one thing i have observed and uh, if, if if these notifications are not properly managed if they are very frequent then it, it can uh, uh, the importance of these reminders can de deteriorate after that it, it could be uh, uh, it, it it wouldn't be a great thing to have uh, a proper management i think it it can work very well right and when when you say management what what exactly do you mean so uh looking at the data how the users are actually interacting how many people are uh, re uh, uh, actually reacting to this particular thing what they are doing after this trigger how, how many people how much serious is it is it uh, for, uh, uh, taking the complete pie of all of these reminders i think we would be able to get uh, uh, closer and closer to uh, the accuracy got it yeah yeah interesting interesting Anshul, Navin, do you guys have any question? We could take one more. As per the time. Nothing from my end, Anshul. You had something in mind? Ah, uh, a small question. Ah, uh, Balaji, in your versioning grid, ah, uh, you have mentioned you want to roll out the details FAQ page first for subscriptions, and then ah uh, the actual feature. Why do you want to do that? So I think ah uh, I I have ah uh, I've seen a great ah uh, increase in ah. Uh, people when they see a new feature they open the google search for it or they open the youtube and uh, see for tutorials how to use that particular feature if you see youtube they, uh, we have a lot of videos where uh, uh, they have described how, how a particular feature can be availed or something of that sort I, i really think first educating the user and then bringing out that uh, flow would, would 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 really give give a better clarity and uh, for the usage of the uh particular feature okay i think yeah i mean that's an interesting point so i think anshul maybe we could go on deeper later but um, how to videos are a debated debated topic in the consumer product industry given that uh, there's one school of thought which says that you know your product should be that easy to use and there shouldn't be any how to video and the school of thought is exactly what you mentioned so yeah definitely up to debate but yeah great slides i think um, we'll go deeper into it and all the best for for yeah thank you thank you for the opportunity okay thank you so much and guys i'll just share my screen once again for everyone who is uh, listening to this feel free to add your thoughts to the chat section you could brainstorm there we also have a very quick if time permits we'll also have a very quick fire side with our panelists towards the end so if you have any questions around product management in any questions that you have around you know that you'd like to ask sanchep anshul and navin 
add that to the questions tab on the right so we could take that towards the end but i'll just share my screen once again for the next three participants uh, we'll remove balaji you guys can screen see my screen right yeah uh, next up we will have awesome awesome gayatri you're up next if you could please raise your hand i'll just bring you right up okay she is here now yes we have gayatri with us gayatri could you just say hey so we can yeah perfect we can hear you we can see you Awesome. Let me awesome. just check the internet connection. Just give me a second. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can okay. you hear me? Yeah, perfectly. Awesome. Cool. Same rules apply. So not repeating it. Uh, you're aware of that. So all the best to you. And you have ten minutes straight, two minutes Q and A uh, from our mentors. And your time starts now. Gayatri, are you stuck? All right. Uh, can you see my not screen? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Now we can uh, see the screen. Not the present. Yeah, for sure. I think she got dropped off. Gayatri, if in case you are here, just raise your hand again. I'll invite you to the stage. um can you see me yeah yeah perfect we can see you if you could share your screen again yeah um, um can you see it right now yeah we can see it i think if you could go to the yep yeah, we can see it perfect so guys yeah. your time starts now not the previous time it starts now over to you and all yeah. the best all right so i'll just get get straight to it so the process which i took um so there were two uh, main problems one is to remember to take the dose on time and planning and ensuring that there is sufficient stock of the medicines at home for chronic users for chronic patients and how would i as a pm at pharmacy solve this problem so i'll just take you through the process i did so to explore the problem i did a few user interviews empathy mapping i created a user persona customer journey in a desk study and it did a competitor analysis for the solution i focused on three things one is the medication reminder the refill system and an in app chat box and for the strategy part the two parts product and marketing strategy uh so for the qualitative interviews i interviewed five people i'll talk a little bit about the segment uh there are people between the ages of 45 to 60 who have to take medicines regularly themselves or are caregivers to family members with the same restriction and i asked very specific questions uh, related to the problem statement and in addition to that i have also asked uh, a few uh, questions about how comfortable they are with uh, using the app and uh, additional things in how they use uh, tech in general uh, whether you know uh, what websites they use what apps they use uh, that kind of questions then i created an empathy map which is basically uh, for me to sort of um, make sense of their answers and what uh, as them as users does thinks says and feels so this is basically a way um, of just sorting out their responses and making sense of that uh, then uh, after all that uh, i gained it and created a user persona which sort of encapsulate all, encapsulates all of that so uh, she is a chronic patient who is also a caregiver uh she's a 47 year old woman living in pune she has been a patient of type 2 diabetes for the past 2 years uh her mother has a medication to bring down her high cholesterol and anemia and she has a son who has a vitamin deficiency so her goals are pretty simple she just wants a safe and reliable way of ordering medicines she wants to make sure her family has their medication regularly and on time and to make sure that the medicines always stocked up at the right time she has multiple pain points um uh, about basically her family missing uh, dosages and not trusting um, medicine apps to order in general because they don't have an expiry date then she also forgets uh, you know to see if they have taken the medicines on time and also medicine expenses in addition to other things uh then i created a, a basic use a uh, customer journey so in this case i have assumed that she is uh, already a user of the pharmacy app 
and uh, how her journey is. So this is basically she starts with, uh, you know, she doesn't have enough uh, medicine to last for another day. And then she orders it on the app and then she gets it delivered right on time because PharmEasy is always really uh, prompt in that. Uh, and then uh, she sees the refill section of the app in the accounts. But then uh, right now there's no way to join the refill services. So she realizes that, you know, the next time she places an order, that's the only time she can join the refill services when they call uh, the customer call. Uh, then um, about uh, she has to take the dose twice a day and give her mother her medicines thrice a day. And that invariably causes her to forget, uh, you know, one of the doses. Uh, then I also, that's a bit of exploration about uh, the customer journey, which helped me later on in uh, designing the screens. Uh, then I did a little bit of the desk, uh, a desk study, which is basically uh, some consideration in, relate to, uh, in relation to the user persona. So they are people who are a bit older. So you have to take into consideration the vision, hearing, memory, and tech literacy. So um, doing a little bit of study on that, there are a few design guidelines, which I've sort of listed here which could help the design team at PharmEasy to sort of um, understand uh, how, you know, different considerations in relation to the target persona. Then we have uh, a bit of a, a simple competitive analysis, which is uh, focused only on the features, which I would have liked to add. And uh, since it shows that uh, PharmEasy, um, what do you say? Um, this is what PharmEasy is trying to target, the refill subscription, refill inventory remindery, the dosage remindery, and medicine delivery. So if we have all of this, we will definitely um, be above our competitors. Uh, about the scope of the project, what I've done is I've used an Android. Uh, it's restricted to an Android app. Metrics is uh, something I have assumed is important to the company. And the user flows are limited to the main user flows. And I've not gone into the budget resource allocation and timelines in this case. Uh, so the first problem would be um, of them not able to remember to take their medication on time. So in this case, um, I have suggested uh, adding it into two places. One is in the account section, which is there here, and one is in the main on the main homepage to have a module for easy access. And uh, two of the so now once we uh, add a feature like how how do we uh, measure it actually works or not? So I think two KPIs are the most important in this feature would be to check out the retention rate and the stickiness of the app of the feature of the app uh, once it's done. So this is basically I've just listed down different kinds of inputs which are necessary when um, you add a medication to the system. And some things which, if you order it on pharmacy, pharmacy already knows that information that could be treated. Uh, the user does not have to use uh, any um, of their cognition for that. It'll just make it easier. Uh, this is a basic uh, sort of review of uh, the app right now. And uh, this would be a user flow of what I think uh, could be added to the current app. So what uh, I'll just tell you in short what it does. It um, uh, it goes from the dosage reminder. It starts from a dosage reminder page, and then you add the different information about the uh, medication you want to add, uh, and then you um, uh, it ends with um, setting the refill reminder and the kind of notification. And then you in the refill uh, part also can be added in this where they ask you whether you want to have a refill subscription or not. Uh, then this is just a basic sort of uh, UX uh, thing which I suggested where you have, I'll just talk about this one screen. Uh, there's a dosage reminder screen which shows you which date you're on about today's medicines. The person who is there, like she has a family, right? So she needs to see whose medicines they are and then whether it is taken, what time it's taken and how much is left, you know, that part of it. And uh, one more thing I've added here is everything else is pretty simple. Uh, one more thing I've added here is the color. They can add like icons so uh, people can remember it easily. It's much easier to remember, you know, colors and icons and all of that. Uh, other than that, <clears throat> uh, these are, oh, I'll just focus on one thing here. Uh, is uh, the kind of uh, reminders you get. Uh, so when you get just net notifications, that may not be enough. And uh, having loud alarms also may not be good for some users. Everyone has different pref preferences in notifications. So that's why um, I've kept that option also here where you can add the type of notification you want. Uh, the second uh, problem was uh, the stocking of medicines at home. So for this, uh, I thought upgrading and promoting the refill services 
is necessary so here again you have a refills tab and uh, a re refill module on the home page and here the kpis to be measured are the monthly re recurring revenue and the gross user churn because specifically this is a subscription service so uh, you know you can uh, measure it according to that to see how people are uh, using it uh, so right now you just have a basic sort of information flow uh, and no uh, CTAs right now to uh, for a person to actually join the refill services. So that is something you know which could be changed. So I did a basic user flow of how that could happen. And um, <clears throat> so you um, uh, okay. So uh, I'll just start from this part right here where you read about the benefits of the refill services and how it works. From here, there are two options. You can create a refill subscription and you can create a refill reminder. So um, about uh, the refill subscription, it asks you questions like um, uh, how long, how often do you need to take this medicines, etc. And then you can set a subscription for this item, which entails that, you know, uh, it gets delivered to your house uh, in a specific uh, amount of time, uh, in a specific interval of time. Um, and uh, whereas a, rem a reminder would be different in the sense that it is it just provides you a reminder and you can order from then. Um, so then uh, one more thing I thought was uh, this re the part of refill services could be integrated into the purchase flow itself. Like the purchase flow right now is just amazing. Uh, it's very efficient. And um, so uh, just in addition to that, we could see if there is a refill reminder checkbox uh, added. So you know that uh, part could be integrated and there could be a cta for uh, adding a refill subscription also here uh, one more thing is a placement on the home page for accessibility so this is something which a competitor has actually done uh, they have um, used uh, this part of the home page to uh, add a new, uh, the new features and you have this red dot you can see here the no notification dot so a, a user when he uses it when he sees that it's also non-obtrusive, but he knows that there's something there, so he's always going to uh, click on it. Then you have uh, uh, this part below, which uh, only comes up on the home page when the refill is running low. Otherwise, it's just the normal uh, home page. Um, this one, uh, yeah, one yeah, yeah, sure. You can uh, wrap it up just to give you a heads up. We're on time now, so you have 30 seconds to wrap up. Lovely slides again, but so sorry, we need to cut. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, so uh, just uh, very quickly, uh, I thought that a farmer bot could be like uh, interesting. So uh, I'll just tell you why I thought. Uh, so there are different things I thought like for the user from perspective of for the product and for the business. Um, so there are different kinds of things like for the product, there is an improved medication adherence rate. It increases the trust and satisfaction. There's a lot of personalized recommendations like dietary recommendations, different reminders. And for the business, it's always good at, at um, good monetization. The product strategy, I'll just tell basically, it's basically develop and ship basic features. Then you, do the, this is for the current users right now. Then you do iterative testing on them. And then you uh, change the designs for optimum results and only then move on to the marketing strategy. And then for the marketing strategy, you, uh, you go to the awareness, consideration, acquisition, service, and loyalty. And where uh, here, I'll just tell basically what I've uh, taken for the awareness. I've taken print and TV ads, Facebook ads, and uh, you know Google ads because uh, of the use of persona specifically. Uh, because uh, you know there are people who would you know uh, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, um, being so yeah. Okay. Yeah, no worries, no worries. We would just wrap it up there. I think the idea is around the bot. I'm so sorry. I know. I think it's very interesting. Maybe towards the end when they are, um, you know, uh, doing the scoring, just to keep it active. And maybe for the next one, we'll increase it from 10 minutes, but just to keep it equal for everyone. The idea is around the bot, which we'd love to listen to later. But I'd love to give our panelists here a chance to, you know, ask you some questions if they have any. Naveen Anshul Sanchit, over to you guys. Hey, Gayatri. Hi. Hi. Uh, excellent stuff on you, first of all. Uh, uh, I just wanted to double down a little bit on the uh, uh, refill solution that we are proposing. Uh, so mm -hmm. I, I kind of understood that you're suggesting some CTA, some UX changes in terms of uh, how we offer yeah. the refill flow today. Yes. Uh, do you have any any thoughts around uh, what could be different, or or do you just want to stick to what we offer today and just present it differently? It's, is there a 
core solution um, different that you think um so uh, right now uh, there are two ways it happens one is through a call so that is definitely um, uh, that should be kept but in the way it's done yes um, there should be like a part where you choose the delivery um, what do you say times and uh, you can also choose like uh, different kinds of ways and uh, those specifications should all um, be there i didn't want to i couldn't go into uh, the detail of the kind of things but the user should have control on um, you know when you're creating a refill subscription they should know uh, what kind of uh, timelines they are looking at if they want to make changes in the uh, refill sort of subscriptions uh, that sort of thing i think uh, it's something i haven't really explored in this tech Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. I had a slightly off-topic uh, point. Kathy, uh, uh, I just loved the depth of both the the user research as well as the mocks uh, that you put up. Are you are you a UX UI designer by any chance? Yeah, I'm a UX designer. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Great. Great. Keep it up. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. So, yeah, lovely slides again. Uh, Anshul, do you have any questions for Gayatri? Or we could. Ah, uh, no, no, all great. Awesome, awesome. So, Gayatri, maybe on the bot bit, we'll come back to you on that. Maybe you could share a little more while you know towards the end. But yeah, thanks once again, and all the best. Bye. Uh, guys, last role for today, where we get to know who goes next. Two participants left, so running it one more time. Um, Gauri, uh, Apurva, and Anand. I guess we have our answer. Anand, you're up next, and we know who goes last. So, with that, would love if you could raise your hand. I'll get you up on screen. Uh, Anand's here. Let's see if we can see him now. Anand, if you could switch on your video. Yeah, hey, I will. Awesome. Yes, we can hear you. We can see you. Uh, you know the rules, so not repeating it. But sure. all the best. If you could just share your screen, then we could start the time. Sure. You could also just uh, take thirty seconds before while you're sharing. If you could share a little bit about yourself, just one line on your background. What do you do? And then, then the stage is yours. Okay. You are able to see my screen, right? Yes, perfect. We can hear you. We can see your screen. Perfect. And Hi. Right. Quick introduction. Uh, uh, I work as a technical program manager with uh, Freshworks. Uh, I'm super excited here to share my perspective on Farm Easy, uh, and a quick uh, huge shout out for the product folks for this amazing initiative. Um, jumping right into the uh, deck. So basically, structure the deck in three aspects. One is the user persona. Next is the problem statement, and next is the proposed solutions. Before I just jump right into the user persona, I'm just going to talk a little bit around the Farm Easy. Farm Easy is uh, one of the leading top healthcare company focused in e-pharmacy space, and uh, uh, and also has a vision of singular platform to cater to all the users' healthcare needs. Um, so. Today, uh, the problem that we are solving is more than a million of chronic consumers have multiple recurring. Uh, Uh, you know, medications like India is called the diabetes capital of the world. You know, it, uh, the kind of uh, data it stocks is crazy. So uh, the challenge today we are going to tackling is remembering to take the dosage of time and also making sure that users are on top of uh, making sure they have sufficient stock uh, and as a predictable stock, right? Um, So let's just uh, take a quick look at the user persona. Uh, I'm just going to talk about that. Uh, meet Navya. She's a, a IT professional based out of Bangalore, and she fundamentally believes that technology is the foundation to transform the world. Uh, and her major goal here is to uh, manage her parents' healthcare uh, by harnessing technology. Um, uh, next is Meet Sethupadi. Uh, he's a retired teacher based out of Chennai. He lives alone. Uh, he has his daughter with who lives outside the country. And he is a, a sort of average, average technology user who, stay, who uses technology to stay connected to friends and family. Is also looking to leverage technology to meet his critical needs like medical care. Well, um, here's the problem, Raymond. Let's just take a walk and uh, say the body issue, right? Um, as a user, um, you know, being somebody who's a retired, who's a senior person, uh, you know, uh, trying to figure out, uh, having a lot of prescriptions, going to an app. to have you know to be able to choose through search through multiple medicines 
making sure all the medicine there um, especially in terms if there's a you know um, stock that is not available what does he do you know he gets stumbled there does he really use the app or does he just go to the medical shop and especially given that uh, you know scenario where there is covid situation right what really happens you know if like let's say uh, for a case he has hypertension that will even shoot up that will in- increase the more uh, problem right and uh, adding on to that right uh, once he has his all the medicines uh, the problem comes with uh, managing the inventory where he needs to figure out which are the boxes that he need to put a medicine and also he also need to make sure that he carries the full pouches when he is even has to travel for a short trip right? and uh, here comes the uh, you know problem with taking the medication sometime even our, our lives are so dynamic and even just to say simple stepping out to uh, you know go to an atm or a bank and you have so much uh, uh, leading to a lot of uh, time waiting there and you miss, miss on a medication time right it's very very hard uh, in terms of making sure uh, people are able to especially when there are too many too many medicines involved you need to know which medicine which drops which injection there are so many things a user um, you know has a problem managing right um, in fact one of the chats showed that uh, india is about 24% in terms of adherence in terms of medication right um, and here comes uh, another uh, part where he needs to figure out which is the nearest uh, test center that he needs to go to you know he has to anticipate what's the crowd how should he travel uh, figuring out if the wait time is going to be too long there are so many things that he needs to think about even before venturing out right uh, and then the pinnacle of all of these things is fixing a doctor visit right making sure he gets appointment figuring out what are things that he needs to get to the point right and uh, here is a proposed solution um, basically uh, from a farm easy point of view i've uh, split it into three stages and we'll just look at how do we optimize in each stages the first stage is where we obtain accurate and relevant data for context and personalization um, this will be measured in terms of the order completion rate start from start to complete stage 2 is where we're going to focus on the process packaging and delivering the hassle free way and this will be measured in terms of delivery success rate on time and stage 3 is where we're going to focus on enabling the users to make sure they are able to take their dosages on time right and this is again based on the post completion rate and this has a not so metric which is the overall kps which will be talking about monthly active users in terms of discoverability and usage funnel in terms of usability from start to delivery we will also cut uh, monthly repeat orders in terms of retention right and also each of these stage will have uh, two solutions two aspects of solution one is the short term one is the long term right getting right into stage one uh, getting relevant data Uh, some of the short term uh, solution is here in terms of today we have uh, you know options to for patients to just order based on the prescription and medicine but there is no mapping today even though we get the relevant uh, data like prescription patient details and everything but there is no mapping today this is a huge step towards creating an enormous opportunity for us to really personalize in terms of uh, it could be a quick order for a patient it could be uh, you know getting a, a recommended customized uh, rec- recommendation in terms of healthcare products or recommended test uh, you know personalization has so much to offer uh, that could be a great opportunity and scan and upload today uh, there is a workflow where uh, you can go ahead and upload the prescription and it says everything can be uh, everything uh, will be taken care but once you upload the prescription it just takes you to the cart and you know you need to figure out how to do all of these things instead uh, you know having a scan and upload where you just upload your prescription and then let the pharmacist calls you to make sure that you get a link to the final order where you can confirm your payment mode uh, will help and here is a subscription today we have refill options uh, but again that seems to be very hard for users to discover right so make it very simple and intuitive uh, just before you check out have an option where you do a one time purchase or you do a subscribe and when you subscribe you show the upfront uh, discounts what you're saving and also the time of which uh, how long do you want to uh, subscribe it could be one month three months start from basic so that people can build the trust um and in terms of long term solution uh, what we plan to do is uh, introduce a new bundle order basically today workflow is very very hard like uh, if it's too many medicines then current workflow is very creates a lot of friction for us to use it to that but think about a bundle order where users are able to figure out a bundle order in terms of uh, giving their medication dosage test required and everything as one bundle um, and then they will be able to uh, get all of the other things rest automated and also introducing voice based search um, this is a very pretty uh, uh, familiar agenda for a lot of people like uh, uh, presently more than 20% of search queries in india are already done by voice 
And not only that, we are already familiar in terms of, uh, you know, while talking with Alexa or Google Home, or even in fact, in terms of medicine, a lot of people, we are used to going to the medical shop and asking for a Compiflam or a paracetamol. We've been used to that. So it, it makes sense for us to really sort of uh, use voice-based search to enable users to place orders via voice. And the next is what, WhatsApp integration, placing orders. Um, today, even though, uh, you know, we have, we are trying to make it very intuitive, a lot of people might find it very uh, difficult to uh, navigate through that. But think about a way where you can transform people ordering their, uh, placing their orders, right? Uh, you can just go to the WhatsApp and then just like uh, having a family conversation, you just have a conversational uh, you know, bot that can talk to you about which is what is the order I want to place, do I need to subscribe or one-time purchase and all that. You can just uh, use it uh, uh, by integrating with WhatsApp. We'll talk about the stage two, where we focus on process, packaging, and delivering in a hassle-free way. Um, so for the short term, we're introducing Pill Organized Box. This comes as a complement for all the bundle orders uh, so that people don't need to go about figuring out which box they keep in and, and uh, it has a very organized uh, way of doing things. Even though it might uh, sound as simple as that, but it's some of the things that we overlooked. Um, and also today, uh, for a chronic illness, when there is a medicine that is not available, it is a deal breaker for a lot of people. Uh, because what happens if you know uh, the medicine is not available? They'll have to scramble to figure out if they have to jump to a different app like Genie for Swiggy, or should they you know, really go to a nearest pharmacy run by and just get the things right? So allow users to just go to the pickup uh, for the nearest. Uh, in the we have a marketplace model, so aggressively expand so that we're able to uh, you know let users to go to pickup and pick up their offers. Um, and then the long term, we're introducing a new uh, smart device called MediBuddy. Uh, basically, MediBuddy will allow you to store your injections, your uh, uh, tablets, and everything. And also, it comes with the smart technology of uh, GPS and Bluetooth. This also has a proximity tracking, which means that when you pass by, it like, can just indicate with the lights or uh, small beep sounds. Um, so that's on the stage two. Um, stage three is uh, enabling users to remind uh, so that they can adhere to the course. Uh, here, we're introducing a habit tracker. Basically, with every bundle offer and a refill, um, users get a habit tracker with a physical sheet where they can mark on which day they've consumed. It's very easy for people to for make sure they are able to adhere to the medication. Um, and obviously, smart reminders. Um, today, a lot of these things, like think about the chronic flow where we talked about we get a lot of dos dosage information, patient, everything. It just makes sense for not to have too much manual things, but just automate all of these. Uh, have just a toggle button before you check out, which will enable you to sort of have reminders. Um, and then also in reminders, you can have missed alert dosage to family member or analytics report that will say uh, how much medication have you done, and it can be easily shared with the doctors. And then also uh, different mediums that they are available today, just not uh, uh, you know uh, in-app notification, but also using WhatsApp or smartwatch or uh, you know fitness bands or even uh, your smart devices like Alexa, Google Home. We also introduced a gamification concept, like basically um, to improve and motivate users to be able to uh, you know uh, make sure that they are adhering to the medication. So basically, creating a strategy to allow them to complete X number of uh, courses, 100% successful completion will allow users to get some sort of a reward, which can be used against, uh, you know, maybe uh, farm easy wallet. Um, um, all right, so we talked about the whole flow of how it works for farm easy. Think about the world, how Sedubadi's world will transform once we have the chronic illness flow introduced, right? So you, it'll be easy for them to just place a bundle order. Uh, if he's not too tech savvy, he can allow users to just place out of your uh, prescription or over a call. And all of these details will be captured, like those are details, patient name and everything else, right? And a very important caveat is here, like uh, the success criteria will be based on uh, making sure that we have the availability of 98% for chronic illness flow, right? Uh, either by, you know, aggressively expanding our marketplace model, as described earlier. Um, and here is the aha moment for the user, right? Where uh, once the medication arrives in a box, in a utility box where he can compartmentalize and, and figure out what he needs um, and also comes with a tracker uh, and everything else is all set for him. Um, he doesn't need to much worry about what is inventory or his uh, reminders and everything. Right? And obviously uh, the last part is completing the course and finishing uh, taking the test 
which is uh, and obviously correlating in terms of medication adherence with the test improvement we can also introduce some sort of a gaming game education to give some points that can be added to the family wallet right life will become a lot simpler for say the baby right so here are some of the markers that i've drawn for chronic illness uh, uh, i'm so sorry just yeah. giving a heads up that we are right on time for you so okay. this would be the last like 30 seconds to wrap up perfect So this is some of the markup that we did. So introducing bundle order right in the homepage, um, enable users to just a toggle button. Just zero can become one, one or zero, and all these things. And also enabling smart reminders. And here are some of the few recommendations we talked about. Enable use to use to search via order via voice commands, personal extensions, and scan an order. Um, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for the great opportunity. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks so much, Anand. Um, Anshul, Navin, whoever wants, uh, Sankhya, anyone who wants to go first, stage is yours. Hey, hi, I'm Anshul. Hi. Can you can you talk about what you exactly mean by a bundle order? So basically, a bundle order uh, means that uh, today, uh, so let's say every order that I need to go search and then add it, but today bundle order uh, for a tech savvy person, which means that they'll be able to provide details like dosage details, everything. and everything will come at the right time uh, at one time instead of uh, let's say if there is a non a medicine that is not available then you know you'll have to figure out what to do in that case but here you just make sure that everything is a bundled together at once right but uh, just just want to go a de- little deeper here uh, mm-hmm. a normal order today is a composite order right and yeah. those workflows are handled uh, already like you know you can do a combination of categories verticals in stock out stock all those things are there so uh, you know uh, the the entire concept of introducing a new order type itself is it uh, adding w- what what value add is it to the uh, consumer so basically uh, today as a, the the chronic illness is a very critical part right so today like let's say for a, as a user i need to go about adding every single medicine like how do you get all of that description at once and make sure you order that will be very difficult for a user to do that but here in in uh, uh, bundle order you can upload your prescriptions the number of two three prescriptions and make sure that those are all bundled bundled together at once got it so so basically you are solving for the convenience part right that the user is not going to add the multiple things right is my understanding correct sorry i lost a bit uh, sorry sorry uh, is my understanding correct uh suhas there's a bit of a noise at your end right anand so i was asking uh, basically what you are solving for is the convenience part you are uh, providing an access channel to him to be able to upload his prescription and be able to order seamlessly without ha- uh, without the full full uh, funnel experience right correct convenience as well as uh, today we don't capture those it is like today if a chronic patient let's say he has to order uh, either 10 strips or 15 strips available he can't order for his course so we need to introduce uh, so if you go to a local retail pharmacy is people We'll figure out what's a, what's their course that they want. Like it could be five tablets or six tablets, but we don't have that option. Where you figure out for which course, what is it you need? You don't need to uh, let them order based on the strips that are available. So a lot of things that is bundled together into also having experience for users to be able to uh, get that organized. Understood. And and would the bundle also solve for the refill aspect? Yeah, that's right. Yes. Okay. Uh, can you talk about that as well? I, I mean, I didn't get that part on how how is the bundle solving for a uh, for the refill aspect? Sure thing. So I think once we have the dosage information uh, and everything right, so uh, we will just sort of subscribe and save at the end of checkout. That will help users to figure out what is their uh, you know duration that they want to subscribe to. Uh, that's how we so, uh, solving the refill. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Awesome. 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 uh sanchit do you uh, and sanchit thanks for the question anshul do you have any questions or navin anyone else wants to ask anything yeah i have one uh, anand uh you mentioned something about utility box uh, yeah. the package in which the medicines were delivered how do you bring that to the original problem statement to solve uh, for refills and medicine uh, reminders so basically uh, one of the things is uh, organizing itself is a problem for one of the users to be able to make sure that they don't miss a dose either right so let's say i as a person you know who needs to make sure i take the medication putting in a box or a, or a bigger pouch for me to sort of make sure i take i take the medication this is all one of the way that let's like how reminders has an auxiliary this organizing will also make sure that you're organized to uh, you know seamlessly take uh, dosages on time 
like you know which pill to take on monday or you know which pill to take on a morning or evening so there is no spillage that will cause of uh, you know uh, either uh, pills getting spilled over in a different uh, uh, days or that will cause unpredictable uh, inventory for your system got it now in you have anything or we could carry on to the next the last slide Awesome. Thanks so much, Anand. I think uh, great work, and we'll see you on the other side. All the best. Do stay tuned. Thanks. So, guys, uh, last participants for today has been really, really interesting deck so far. I think uh, our our panelists are gonna have a hard time choosing the winner, but um, just bring up the last set, Anand and Gauri. If you guys could, could, I think yeah, I see. Uh, Apoorv, I see Gauri. So I'm just handing over the mic to one of you, and the other one I'll pull up on stage. Let me see if this is possible. Also, we can see. I've invited Gauri as well. I hope both can. I hope we can see both together. Yes, awesome, awesome. So uh, welcome, Apoorv. Welcome, uh, Gauri. Gauri is actually a finalist again. So many people here might know her. Apur, while she's connecting, maybe you could quickly intro yourself so that we could. Sure. So, Gauri and I are here at the University of Chennai. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, Gauri, I think we can see uh, whose screen is this? Gauri is presenting. Gauri is presenting. Awesome. Gauri, we can't see your video. Maybe that is your bandwidth. If that is the case. You could just tell here we can't hear uh, you. Yeah, I'll just tell when I speak. Sure. Okay. Perfect. We can. Uh, so you guys, I think I said you probably know the rules as well. Hand it right over, and uh, all the best. If you could go into full screen, that could be great too. But uh, over to you. Your time starts now. Sure. So in this stare down, we're going to take a look at the illness, diagnose it, write it a prescription, and then hand out the candy. So for conducting a groundwork, we did market research from both the pharmaceutical as well as the medical perspective to get to the root of issues as well as basic place to reviews. And during this, we found that over a quarter of the Indian population suffers from one chronic disease or the other, with a third of these patients not adhering to maintenance to maintenance medication, which leads to three lakh lives being lost due to diabetes alone every year. With this in mind, our interpretation of the problem statement was to solve for three pain points of chronic users for different age demographics, which were to remember to take doses on time, to ensure you always have enough dosage uh, medicine, and them having to go go through the entire funnel to place refill orders and wa wa waiting for turnaround times. So, with this in mind, our objectives became to simplify the order funnel for chronic patients and assisting them with restocking and dosages. as well as making provisions for users of different ages to do so we had to assume of that we only considered the android interface since 70% of the traffic comes from it and limit ourselves to only chronic patient personas to stay in line with the problem statement we also only focused on medicine sales since that's 80% of the revenue as per the ama and we also assume that 50% of app users are ordering for patients other than themselves therefore our approach becomes with an aim to elevate pharmacy the pharmacy experience for chronic users in order to do so we did a user journey review to identify pain points which were then processed through a hard framework to define problems to be solved for these problems were then brainstormed with different user personas to get possible solutions the viabilities and impacts of which we then analyze using trade offs and value propositions So, with the problem statement in mind, we define three user personas. The first one being the low technic technology comfort boomer who has to take the same medicine for years on end, and he just wants to remember to take doses and go to the doctor appointments on time. Then you have your high functioning diabetic millennial who wants to regularly monitor insulin levels, balance work with a healthy lifestyle. and get medicines and make appointments for the rest of his family as well and lastly we have the female zoomer whose priorities are getting period supplies and contraceptives every month and having a good skincare routine 
This is an important caveat here that while feminine products aren't necessarily chronic medication, however, it represents a large potential market segment for products which are used over prolonged periods. And the market scape can also greatly leverage timely restocking, tracking, and reminders, which aligns with the pain points identified. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, with these personas in mind, uh, we'll now do a run through of a typical chronic user journey. So starting with the uh, doctor's appointments, the patient will receive a fresh prescription, which they will fill at a pharmacy of their choice. Uh, then ideally, the user will adhere to the uh, prescribed dosage and regularly refill the prescription within its validity period. After which, uh, the user will visit the doctor again for a fresh prescription. Typically, chronic patients are also advised to monitor their own vitals like blood sugar for diabetics uh, to report to the physician in case of irregularities. Uh, these patients are also advised to lead generally healthier lifestyles to manage their uh, conditions. So the pain points for this particular user uh, would start with uh, forgetting scheduled uh, doctor's appointments that leave them without valid prescriptions. Uh, next is having to go through the long funnel uh, for each prescription and uh, maybe forgetting to stock up altogether. Uh, the patients also tend to uh, neglect uh, tracking their vitals and uh, adhering to the dosage. And finally, there are the common uh, hiccups in uh, leading a healthy lifestyle. Uh, so we then process these uh, pain points through the goals defined in the HART framework uh, to obtain uh, uh, some distinct problem definitions that we then brainstorm for. Uh, so HART lists five uh, goals, which are increasing uh, user uh, happiness, uh, encouraging uh, engagement with content, uh, increasing value seen by users, motivating user returns and assisting uh, effective task completion. So starting with happiness, solving for the user's lifestyle goals would uh, definitely increase this metric. Uh, engagement of chronic users is um, currently uh, uh, difficult owing to the uh, e-commerce centric interface that is not conducive to illness management. Uh, then solving for smaller tasks in the chronic user's life cycle, like dosage or vital tracking and doctor's appointments would encourage adoption by uh, the chronic user segment. And finally, the long refill funnel is possibly deterring retention of chronic users and old and vernacular users might not be able to easily navigate the funnel uh, to complete tasks such as purchases. Uh, so the four distinct problem definitions that we extracted uh, for brainstorming are uh, aiding in comprehensive uh, chronic disease management, increasing accessibility for users, older users, encouraging lifestyle improvement and trimming the refill uh, funnel. Uh, the possible solutions for illness management we ideated are reminders for scheduled doctor's appointments and checkups, systems for monitoring vitals as prescribed by the doctor. So that would include reminders, uh, logging the details and tracking of stats. And finally, a rehaul of uh, the UX towards our account centric design for chronic users. Uh, next, rearranging the user flow to imitate real life processes and an audiovisual uh, guide uh, would increase accessibility for older users, while local la language options would help vernacular users. Uh, then lifestyle improvement uh, can be uh, possibly encouraged with the access to relevant uh, coaches, Fitbit integration and gamification of recommended habits. Uh, and finally, uh, trimming the uh, refill funnel will call for a highly customizable subscription system for uh, these refills. So all of these uh, solutions have now been categorized into four separate uh, strategies. Starting off with a subscription strategy that we call Farm Assist. Um, so this is an upgradation of the current plus subscription designed to appeal more to chronic users. So the subscription would provide discounts on refills, free delivery and an illness management UI. Uh, a free two month trial would uh, encourage uh, discovery and uh, adoption. Uh, so here the subscribers are explicitly instructed to get refill details on their prescription and this would allow automated um, refills being initiated after the initial verification for the refill time uh, specified on the rx uh, so uh, the billing would uh, either be through automated credit deduction or wallet order with a uh, notification before each refill 
um, because of the nature of uh, uh, refills, each refill is customizable and users can either skip the cycle, change quantities or add and remove drugs with supporting uh, prescriptions. Uh, the other features of the subscription would be doctor's appointment reminders, dosage reminders and vitals login. All of these uh, uh, functions would work in conjunction with the already existing patient's profile uh, feature, which would allow users to maintain details of multiple patients. So this is the uh, 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 proposed UI for the subscription, and it would feature account -centric, uh, an account-centric homepage. Uh, this would list upcoming uh, refills, dosage, vital checks, and doctor appointments uh, prominently, along with paths to like edit uh, future iterations of each of these reminders. So, for example, a user could go into the active refills and uh, edit uh, any future refill that has been scheduled, and uh, also edit the frequency of their refills and such. Uh, moving to UX rehaul, the, uh, the strategy focuses on accessibility to senior users and general navigation improvement. So with this in mind, the first feature is this audiovisual guide mode, the, where uh, users would be allowed to select a task every time they open the app and uh, then receive audio and visual guidance uh, to complete uh, the set task. Uh, so, uh, additionally, the user flow has also been redesigned to imitate a more brick and mortar experience with a separate uh, medicine tab for uh, easy access. Uh, the medicine page itself has been redesigned to highlight th the three specific possibilities. Uh, one is uploading prescriptions along with the instruction to upload. Other is without prescription with uh, the relevant instructions and a prominent call to order uh, feature for uh, older users. And finally, there is the option for local languages to assist small lingual users. Yeah. Um, I'm so sorry, but we are right on time. So this would be your okay. last slide to wrap up in 30 seconds. Yeah, sure. Uh, so the lifestyle dashboard would uh, be to assist users in um, uh, increasing their uh, lifestyle standards. So that would have partnership with relevant uh, diagnostics, Fitbit compatibility, and uh, gamification. Uh, we also did uh, individual value propositions for uh, all four uh, strategies and uh, with a special highlight for uh, the uh, female centric market for the pharmacist subscription. Although it's not a chronic uh, uh, condition, uh, it is a potentially large uh, female market that is uh, largely untapped. And finally, we did a trade off analysis that uh, uh, where we use customer delight, ease of implementation, and revenue uh, to rank the features where uh, the subscription came up uh, first and UX rehaul and uh, chronic diagnosis died for a second. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Gauri. Um, Apu, I know, I think uh, you had some bits towards the end, but we need to <clears throat> take a hard stop here. Maybe listen to that while the judges are scoring towards the end. So um, over to you, Sanship, Anshul, Naveen, anyone wants to start with some questions. Hey, thanks. Uh, very well structured, uh, Gauri and Apoor. Uh, I had a question on the diagnostics piece. Uh, if you can talk a little bit more about that. Uh, wanted to understand how is that piece playing a role in the refills and reorders? Yeah, uh, uh, this, this was not exactly uh, for uh, the resales part. It, it was to uh, kind of round off the cr uh, chronic patients' uh, experience on um, uh, pharmacy. Uh, it's basically an expansion of the currently existing diagnostics uh, feature where the partnerships would be more towards uh, 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 physio and mental therapists and nutritionists, which are generally required by uh, chronic users. and. Uh, like giving them discounts uh, for memberships to these uh, uh, services. Got it. So this is uh, this is around wellness and uh, that space, right? Yes, wellness. Uh, yeah, basically rounding off their experience, specifically mm -hmm. for chronic users. While uh, the lifestyle dashboard could be for all users in general. It essentially complements the their experience on pharmacies app into an into a wholesome and holistic lifestyle like experience which increases app engagement and increases chances of retention of chronic users got it absolutely understood that uh, my specific question was and and maybe these two are linked 
like uh, the difference between the diagnostics uh, solve and the lifestyle dashboard uh, would, would be the two sides of the same coin or are these two fundamentally different things that you you guys uh, they are fundamentally uh, different so chronic diagnostics is uh, diagnostics which are specifically related to uh, chronic users so a lot of di uh, diabetics would need a special kind of nutritionists and dietitians and physiotherapy and uh, mental uh, illnesses are generally considered chronic illnesses so that would come under that but for the lifestyle dashboard this is merely one part of it like lifestyle consultants and that would be more on the side of dietitians as opposed to like nutritionists basically uh, something that someone would opt for rather than need okay Got and it. it has other features lifestyle dashboard Correct. Right. Correct. Uh, Naveen, actually, anything from your side? No, nothing from me. Awesome. No. Awesome. Awesome. Then we probably just take one question which came up in the chat is on what was intended in the two month free subscription? Is there anything specific that you were thinking on that uh, line? I would have the same features as the subscription for two months because that would be the minimum amount of time to kind of experience refills and the benefits of all the other features. Interesting. So Interesting. Merely for acquisition purposes. Got it. So maybe we could maybe, you know, dig deeper into the pricing bit a little later if two months really works out and you know how many of these chronic are taking six to I think it depends on the data. But yeah, just to understand if there's something that you know you came across some research, I think that's where the question is coming from. But yeah, fair point. And yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for sharing this. I think uh, very interesting decks overall and all the best to you too. Again, um, very quickly we'll have the results. So thanks. And yeah, for while we have our <coughs> mentors here, just before they jump into, uh, you know, huddling up to decide who won this session, um, just want Sanship, if you could walk all of, us, all of us through, like, you know, how do you guys plan to think about the scoring for, for these decks? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what we'll try to do is uh, we we've thought about it and we've uh, we'll try to keep it very very simple. So it will be a broadly a five uh, five dimension scoring uh, grid. Uh, we've broken this into two parts. One is the problem identification piece, and then the, then the second is obviously the problem solving piece. And uh, when I come to problem identification, it will be it'll it'll start from the user empathy. That I think is uh, first and foremost very very important when we go about building uh, any product or we start thinking about a problem statement. Second would uh, be more about research and the groundwork which is being uh, being done in terms of um, it could be going through the app, going through workflows, competition, market, secondary data, so on and so forth. Right. So I think a combination of two of these two would be on the problem identification side. And once you you identified the problem crisply, then I think moving to the solve side, um, first and foremost, it would be structure. How are you able to break down the problem statement? How are you able to think on those lines, able to structure that, solve, and, and then take it to a logical conclusion? Um, second, there would be around depth. I think when, when, when we talk about depth, it has to cover practicality or feasibility of the solve. Um, what are the nitty gritties? What would be some pros and cons of that? as well as um, you know uh, detailing or or the mocks or uh, whatever whatever detailing I, I mean the the time period is was very short i think that's one one area to consider right and uh, obviously the third part on the problem solving is the the storytelling piece for pms uh, very very important that you're able to articulate your thoughts uh, very well because even if you've done a great job in uh, conceptualizing a solve if you're unable to present or unable to put your thoughts correctly in a forum and this is what we would be doing in and out right uh, there's always a forum full of either business folks or tech folks and you have to present your idea and sell your idea right yeah this is this is the one we should go after and this is how we we, we should be solving it so that's broadly the five uh, the five uh, dimension grid and I think uh, to add to that, we have brownie points for uh, the the sparks or uh, creative thinking. So any 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 idea which is really out of the box, I think uh, brownie points for that. 
Uh, Anshul, Naveen, you you guys want to add more? No, I think Sanjeev covered pretty much everything. So as you are on mute. So sorry, I just was saying that your timer starts now. We give you five minutes to huddle up and try coming up with you know the best one. It's going to be hard, but yeah, just five minutes. And meanwhile, we have some interesting things to share with the audience. We'll just chat with them and wait for you guys to come. So you guys could huddle up on that. All the best. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. While uh, while I'm enter the doing this, guys, we have two things planned for you. One is we will announce what are some interesting things. I think Solai is back here, so just putting him on the spotlight for this. But he will take you through what are some uh, you know goodies and stuff that you know the Farmizi team has been super kind to you know incentivize the 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 winners for today. But that said, I just want to highlight that the uh, the intention of doing this is mainly to learn. Like some shifts, talk you through the scoring. This is a super critical part of being a PM as well. One is all the other skills that you see, but every idea you come up with, you need a buy-in from your internal stakeholders as well. And as the team grows, as the company grows, this becomes super critical. Although you might not be doing it as you start off, you will definitely be doing this as you grow through your career. So this is a super important skill, even by practicing this. So consider this as a learning experience rather than the competition or the winner is just you know companies coming on board to incentivize and help you know bridge this gap between the community and and the industry. But um, on that note, I think as Solai shares one part of it, you know, what is in it for the winners? That is a boost so that whoever has not taken part can take part in the next one. Everyone who took part but did not win can put in their learnings. So that is one part. Second, we will be inviting a bunch of guys who are the winners or the finalists for this thing, so we can just have a roundtable to understand what are some tools they use, what are some techniques they use, what did they, you know, how did they go about solving? Like we shared, it's a learning experience. So. I'm sure they'll be they'll be more than willing to share that out. I'm hoping it's it's no secret sauce, but hope they'll be sharing that a little bit in detail so everyone else who you know was a part of this one or wants to be a part of the next one take part in it. We'll we'll have it a little easier. That's what we're hoping. So, so I over to you. Meanwhile, I'll try inviting inviting the next. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, so, great amount of yeah. input by each one of you. Thanks, they're amazing. Lot of lot of great insights so with the incentive part uh, as you guys would have already noticed in our social channels uh, uh, all top four finalists would get 2.5k worth pharmacy cash which can be redeemed completely for the uh, you know buying in the pharmacy app apart from that all four would also get pharmacy branded goodies um, so the goodies would be a surprise until when it reaches you and apart from that, uh, the winner would get an interview opportunity for a product role with pharmacy. So that's uh, for the top four. Uh, usually three plus three, like three uh, finalists and three products box. So this time, since we had four finalists, uh, the product spark could be two, right? Two product sparks would get 2.5k uh, pharmacy cash. So all of you guys get this done um, uh, in like a week of time. You would take all of your numbers and take care of the operational things in the back. Right. Uh, so uh, also for uh, all other folks who are like staying in interested to know about uh, further information about the, the decks of the finalists. So we plan to host uh, like uh, the networking launch uh, in different tables for each part of the event. Like you can ask questions, like, uh, get the ideas from them to participate in the next year down. And next year down would be like uh, we are working to make it better. So I'm just posting the link in the channel for the registration of December tier down. Like guys, uh, hop in and uh, it's not um, important to register, but also try to do decks, right? Uh, the quality of decks are improving every time and you would see yeah. that I'm going towards the product career. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, Sulay. Given that we have five minutes, I just want to give a chance to our finalists as well. Take a minute, uh, maybe Gayatri, you could start. But if you could share with us, you know, how the entire experience has been in terms of problem statement, how did you go about thinking, given that you were already in the UX space, lots to learn there, as well as if you could share some tools for newbies, that would be amazing as well. And um, yeah, Balaji, you can go next, Anand, then last call. So that's where you could go first. All right. Can you yep. 
All right. Um, so yeah, this is the first time I sort of uh, I found this on Twitter, the challenge, and uh, yeah, I just thought I'd go for it. It was a super. I really liked the problem statement because it was super focused, and uh, you know, it, it was based on solving real issues which they are working on. So that's what really got me excited about it. And uh, further to that, uh, it's probably just a process where you think from different perspectives. Uh, that's how I go about solving any problem. Like it's not just from a user perspective; it's also uh, from the perspective of uh, the stakeholders. It's also per from the perspective of a business. Um, so that's how I usually go about problem solving. And uh, this specific one, I did it with the information I could find. Um, yeah. Any, any specific tools that you use, or what just normally? Uh, I use Figma for everything almost. Um, oh. so yeah, that that's just really easy uh, to use for anybody. Like um, I suggest that even for any normal presentation you do, uh, anybody to use Figma because it's just okay. super convenient. You can just send a link to somebody; they can just review it, and it, it's just really great for, especially in remote working. Yeah. Great, it's been a lifesaver. So no. yeah, Figma no. is. Like, I'm perfect. a brand ambassador for Figma, yeah. Uh -huh. no, perfect. Thank you so much. Any resources that helped you, if you could share that in the chat section, that would be amazing. Anything that helped you. But thank you so much. Balaji, I'm pulling you up next. Uh, would be lovely to hear your experience and anything that you think might help future participants. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Uh, there's a read uh what i do generally is like i i approach the problem statement in is a, in a very general manner where i uh, look for uh, what people are writing online uh if, if there are any research papers online i, I will try reading the abstract what what is there i i, I really like to dig deep into the problem uh, before uh, getting hands on on uh, anything else so I, I i i dig deep on the keywords in the problem statement and after that, I try using a uh, seven to eight apps in the particular space and read their reviews and all of those stuff. I, until that's done, uh, I, I will be able to get a clear idea of what other apps are doing, what this app is doing, what, what market are they targeting, what could be the potential uh, use uh, things that could be of use for the particular scenario of the app that we are working on. This is how I particularly approach. After that, I re refine the deck multiple times. I rehearse for a couple of times. And uh, this is how I do on my side. Amazing, amazing. Thanks. Any particular tool that you use? Uh, I use uh, actually Notion for documenting. And apart from that, I, 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 I generally use Figma for uh, creating the mockups and stuff. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thanks so much, Valerie. Any resources that help you, if you could add that to the chat section, that would be amazing. Sure. Thanks. I think um, our uh, judges are ready. Uh, guys, if you could give us a minute, we're just hearing from Anand and Gauri on how they went about building it and uh, some tools. So we quickly wrap it up. Maybe, guys, 30 seconds each. Anand, you go first and Gauri next. Very quickly, how your experience and what, you know, how your thought process was. As well, this will not be impacting the scoring anyway, but just to help everyone else, that would be amazing. Sure thing. Thanks, Ross. I think uh, uh, one of the major things is applying yourself, uh, you know, uh, because I think uh, it was a very interesting problem space for us to release of because pharmacy is something that everyday people use on a daily basis to order medicine, especially during COVID time. So I think uh, there's a ton of uh, research, uh, I mean, articles out there in terms of where the uh, company is headed towards, what their vision, how does strategies applying things like uh, even their recent uh, uh, mergers, uh, what is the whole, uh, who are the different competitors who are, you know, who are competing in the market. So it starts to give you a holistic idea of what you're really getting into. And uh, one major uh, takeaway for me is, uh, is always having that problem statement related to the solution that you have. Because there can be a ton of things that you can always improve on. Uh, but always sticking right to the problem statement that is defined and breaking it down, uh, I think that's that that is something that uh, you know, helped me to make sure I I stay focused on the problem statement more than anything. Got it. Thank you so much. Uh, if there are any resources, do add that to the chat section as well as the tools. If you can share that on the chat section, that would be great. Sure. And uh, last up, very quickly, Gauri and Apur adding your. I think I can see Apur now. So guys, very quickly, if you could uh, help us with, you know, your thought process on um, how you guys, thought, you know, went about it as well as any anything that you might help 
and then thing you think that might help the rest of participants and gauri any tips for people to make it to the finals would be amazing um i think adding on to what everyone else said um i focus mostly on uh, my approach like going from the problem to the solutions but uh, i guess i uh, try to make it clear to whoever is reviewing uh, why i did certain things or why i went in uh, a way that i did so yeah that's main thing oh. apu do you want to share some interesting insights on how it was brainstorming and doing it together that's right it was quite interesting working with someone because you can constantly bounce ideas off of each other and you know iterate through ideas a lot quicker so i th- i feel like instead instead of flying solo like working with a team is quite beneficial in that direction got no perfect um yeah we'll have to hear more but for the possibility of time would be great if you could share any links resources that helped you all in the chat section so it could help for the participants but thank you so much and all the best to everyone we'll just invite our speakers to like i don't want to hold it off for too long so see you guys on the other side you know for sanship and so pinning you guys on it's time for your moment of announcement i think there's something everyone been waiting for so yep i think we can see all of you all uh for creating a little bit of more waiting time would be great if you guys could share the product path first and then we could do like a three to one or jump into the winner we will probably the last section and then we could we could wrap this up with you know that so over to you guys looking forward to see how hard it was ashul can you go ahead with your path first yep yep uh, i mean as i earlier said uh, to the tpf team as well i mean dex were really competitive uh, there are great ideas out there and uh, i mean really cool stuff and uh, we really enjoyed uh, you know going through the dex and the solution that you proposed uh now coming to sparks uh, i mean the idea behind selecting sparks were uh, was basically uh, where people uh, you know have done something out of the box they have done something really great and we really want to acknowledge uh, you know uh those uh, those participants for uh, uh, the thought process that they have put in uh so we have chosen uh, two sparks uh from uh, the entire pool uh the first uh, goes to uh, shruti uh is shruti on the call uh, is she there i'm just checking let me see if she's there but you could go ahead and i'll yeah so uh, i mean uh, for shruti we really like the uh, the way she approached uh, the problem uh, the way she really literally lived the patient's life uh, and uh, you know why offline why online what do the patients do in each and every step of uh, medicine buying journey and that was really well uh, thought out and really well put together so uh, it was a spark moment for us to see the entire research and uh, you know living the patient's life of buying a medicine journey so yeah that was uh, the first uh second uh second goes to uh yeah second goes to insulin cost uh when insulin cost i think one idea that was really uh, out of the box was uh, regarding the diy uh, you know uh, do it yourself uh, converting shipping box to a medicine organizer box that is something really cool uh, really economical and uh, i mean that is something very practical and it will give us uh, and it was a great idea which we really like so yeah that was the second uh, spark moment for us awesome awesome thank you so much anshul i think those pauses in between whether designed or not creates the automatic form of work thank and uh, guys uh, hope this this gives you an idea uh, we'll also be sharing shruti's and krishna's as well as anshul and kostup's those the the decks socially so you can check more about the ideas anshul spoke about and if you guys have any other ideas how we could improve this so product spark is a new thing that we just introduced so that we could get more and more people highlighted but uh, yeah do share if you have any idea and we'll share these socially Uh, without further ado, over to you guys to announce the winners. I think Sanjeev Navin, stage is yours. Cool. Uh, background, background suspense, noise or something. Let me, let me try that. <laughs> the controls. 
Sure. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll go in the reverse order. I think uh, the second runners up uh, position is to Balaji. I think great, excellent effort uh, by Bala uh, across all the five uh, pillars that we were trying to judge for uh, identification, solve, uh, storytelling, presentation, uh, overall killer uh, on all the fronts. The first runner up goes to Gauri and Apoor. Uh, Congratulations, guys. Yes. Yep. Uh, again, uh, uh, very, very neck to neck, uh, very difficult for us uh, to be able to decide or pick, pick, choose which, which ones to score. Again, uh, across all the five areas, excellent. Uh, specifically, uh, uh, kudos on the structure and the uh, storytelling aspects really, really stood out. Uh, 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 and, and, and that's, that's where I think got a little edge over Bala, uh, for both, uh, Gauri and Apoor, but yeah, uh, excellent, excellent work overall. And, uh, finally, I think, uh, uh, the winner, uh, yeah, I didn't find a winner song, but I have like a 10 second Royal Rumble. I don't know whether we should do that. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Okay, this is increasing. Guys, uh, everyone in the audience, I think we did have an audience poll. Do you want to just, uh, I think, Alan, do you have the results for that? Let me see if he shared it or not. So, yeah, I can actually. Yeah, did people uh, fill it in? Like, what is, who do you think has won? Okay, don't, don't announce it then if it will be awkward. Okay. Guy 3, Yuraj is the winner according to the audience. Let's see if that is what our speakers also are finally sad in mind but yeah 10 second rumble if you guys can hear me that's now and the winner is guy three we're just trying to make this a little more fun guys it's super hard virtually well, congratulations, Gayatri, for winning this. And uh, yeah, there are prizes for all winners. But great for Gayatri. I think lots of learning for us as well, for everyone who participated. I think I, I personally look forward to the learning as well. But yeah, Naveen, Sanchev, we would like to share a little more on why you chose for that. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, the thing that stood out for us for uh, with, with uh, uh, Gayatri's uh, presentation was uh, the overall problem identification i think it was spot on on both aspects empathy and uh, uh, research uh, uh, and that's that's i think that that is what i think uh, uh, made us stand out uh, uh, overall yes uh, the solution the storytelling bits uh, great but i think uh, the research bit the uh, uh, problem identification bit really really stood out for gayatri God, God, thank you so much. Gayatri, I think we're trying. If you could raise, yeah, she's here. So I'll just bring her. Yep, she's here. Congratulations, yeah. Gayatri. Thank you, you so wanna, much. Yeah, do you want to give like a winner speech? The stage is yours. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know about a speech, but I'd just like to thank you for organizing this. I mean, it's just so fun, right? I mean, otherwise, as designers, we're like living in this bubble where you're not like, uh, you just talk to your, you know, uh, just the people you're working with and your clients. And this is like a great way to get outside insights. And especially for somebody who's uh, just getting into the field, I think this is just amazing. Yes, so. Yeah, just kudos to you guys actually. And thanks for the insights. I mean, they were great. Yeah. Awesome. Just awesome. Awesome. awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for participating. I think everyone got lots to learn. I'm glad that you had fun. Um, yeah, looking forward for your, you know, next time. The, in December also, I think Salah has already posted. Hope you could join us and, you know, that would be awesome. But yeah, yeah right. Right. Yep, we'll see you around. Thanks. Yeah. Awesome. So guys, we did it. I hope you guys, everyone enjoyed this session. We had a couple of questions that we wanted to ask our mentors, but like I just noticed that it's been almost one hour 45 minutes. So we've gone about the time that we had planned, uh, given that we had four uh, sessions this time. So we'll probably do the fireside on a later date where we can get there, you know, our mentors time as well. Maybe just one question, like we do have a couple of more, maybe I just throw it out 
you know to hear your opinions on just so we have a lot of aspiring guys as well as product managers here so maybe navin and anshul could share their journeys a little more and you know some tips that are not easily available out there which you really think for people to focus on anshul maybe you could take the other side of the table and share some interesting insights on you know how you, how people in general should approach and maybe on another date where we get some more of your time hopefully somewhere in the future we'll host another fire side So yeah, over to you guys. If you guys could share your experience as well as you know something that would help our audience. Anyone, and Navin, and so anyone wants to start, and then Sanjeev. Sanjeev, you want to go ahead, or Sanjeev, you want to go first? I'll go first. Uh, hey, hi everyone. Uh, I started my journey uh, in the product role, so I was very lucky in that aspect that uh, you know I started my journey right, right out of the college uh, in the product role. uh i worked uh, in a healthcare startup uh, in mumbai itself for a year and then i joined farmeasy uh, and it's been 3 years now uh, so yeah i mean uh, uh just because uh, you know i started in the product role i didn't have uh, uh, you know uh, maybe the right resources uh, from the beginning but uh, working at farmeasy i mean i have learned quite a lot uh, you know working with uh, the different teams out so data design business everyone one thing that you know i have uh, i have understood working at farmeasy is you have to ask questions i mean uh, even if you are at the entry level like you are just joining any company or you are just you know uh, become or you are just you know entering into the product role uh, asking questions and uh, you know uh, bringing the right mindset uh, is very important uh, for me i mean whatever uh, you know the first stakeholders you know they might be giving you something they might be giving you ideas but you have to break it down you have to think yourself you have to ask questions why we are doing this and uh, and that's that's the right way to uh, you know uh, explore more on this role and uh, you know becoming successful at it so yeah, that's my advice to the young entrants out awesome awesome thanks anshul and while we were backstage i think chief uh, says that navin is the hiring champ so navin would love to hear some interesting tips that you think you know or some common things that you see going wrong that people here can definitely take care of no i first of all i don't know so so how how to take that uh, tagline uh, the <laughs> that, that that's a compliment <laughs> <laughs> sure so a little bit about my journey i think been pretty eventful uh, i think i've started uh, the pm career uh, with the apm program at uh, flipkart and from there onwards yes as as some shape was mentioned once a pm always a pm a uh, uh, bunch of bunch of gigs quit flipkart to start something of my own in the vernacular space this was before jio uh, didn't didn't quite fly and then uh, joined zeta uh, in the b2b uh, banking suite uh, again very different very unique uh, set of problems very very different uh, uh, culture per se the team size and everything when you compare it to a flipkart setting uh post zeta it was paytm which was another uh, in paytm the beast uh, uh, all itself uh, again working on their pay later product uh, so yeah uh, been getting my hands dirty pretty much everywhere uh, and i think that's that's what the intent has always been to be able to uh, explore as much as possible learn gather as much as possible uh, here at farmeasy itself uh, i think i started off uh, with payments with some shape and now um looking at search and personalization so yeah uh, uh, pretty mindful so far um on the uh, interviewing bit uh, i think uh, a couple of things that i think i have noticed uh, uh on both sides of the table i think uh, uh, if you ask me what's what's something that's missing in the ecosystem i think there's definitely uh, uh, a lack of benchmarks or a lack of mentorship so that is something uh, that i think young pms should actively uh, focus on uh, uh, finding a mentor finding uh, somebody who can guide you uh, the right way uh, building those relationships uh, uh, so that you can always go back to your mentors uh, seek advice that's that's something that's i think is very different uh, from silicon valley uh, uh, you have tons of uh, leadership there uh, people to guide you which is something that's not readily available here in uh, in the product ecosystem in india and uh, uh, it requires some amount of effort uh, uh, on our part to be able to find those key people get get the correct uh, 
guidance. So that's that's the overall uh, missing bit, I would say, if I had to really look at the product ecosystem here. Uh, specifically on the uh, uh, interviewing aspects, I think uh, more often than not, uh, I think as, as Anushul was also, also kind of uh, touching upon being able to ask questions, I think fundamentally we have been trained to answer questions. Uh, we, we, we jump on to or we, we've been wired to uh, finding solutions and I, I think a PM's job is uh, uh, more to do with defining the problem, formulating the problem and then you have your team really helping you out with solutioning for them. So I think that's something that uh, uh, I've seen uh, uh, young PMs really, really not be able to wrap their heads around and, I, and myself was not able to do it uh, when I really, really started off. So I think that's one area to really take care of. Uh, uh, like, yeah. formulate, formulate problems. Uh, not necessarily solutions is what is expected out of PMs. Uh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, absolutely. You know, great points. I think, like in in a very crisp. I think uh, Sanjay might not even have any points left after you guys have covered so much. So yeah, I mean, great point, Sanjay. Maybe just to like highlight, or you could go deeper into one of this. Definitely, if you if you have more points that you have, definitely share that. But I think would love to hear about the mentorship part that Navin spoke about. It's very critical. But since India is, you know, a growing ecosystem and, you know, you, you, you held the leadership roles across various companies. So you're already in that, you know, so while you're doing it um, on that side of the table, what do you see in like a lot of folks who want to reach out to mentors or how do you go about it? If you could share, you know, a little deeper on that side, if you have any points on hiring, definitely you could start there, but would love if you could go deeper into the mentorship. Yeah, honestly, see, uh, on the hiring part, uh, having taken, uh, so many interviews, not just for PharmEasy, but uh, also do help out other uh, uh, platforms. I think the hiring process itself is a bit flawed. Um, to be honest, uh, that one hour, you know, and, and you get that one hour to be able to assess a PM. And PM by design is supposed to don multiple hats. He should be good. Uh, people expect he should be good on the domain, on the tech side. He should be uh, good on the user empathy, metrics, pata hone chahiye, and he should be able to do problem solving in everything packaged in that one hour slot. To be honest, uh, I, I strongly feel it's it's not fair. And uh, to be honest, we've tried out various formats and uh, it's it's both ways, right? Uh, you know, uh, you, you because you are you're always short of time, you're short of uh, filling in roles, uh, uh, you know, you don't have adequate time at the same time. I think candidate, on the candidate side also, because people are working or people are engaged uh, in, in other uh, aspects. I think it, 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 it has never scaled, right? Uh, whenever we've tried uh, doing a doing a deeper assessment in terms of a uh, assignment or a problem solving. So to be honest, it's, it's really very hard uh, to be uh, to, uh, on, on the interview side. Um, in fact, I, re I remember long back uh, 2000, uh, uh, what was the year? 2000, 13, if I'm not wrong, 13, 13 or so, uh, when when Amazon was setting shop in India, right? They they 13, 14, somewhere somewhere around that time, I think they they were taking in a bunch of applications at that point of time, um, and and a lot of those people, a lot of people wanted to uh, you know join or wanted to start off their uh, journeys, uh, and people didn't really know what what to. Uh, what to expect in the interviews, what to prepare, how even resumes, right? What, what, what is it? What is that one resume which will make it to the interview? So to be honest, PM, PM ship is really new in India, right? Five, five years back, uh, five, 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 six years back. I think this was not even a stream. And, uh, if I talk about my year, I graduated in the year 2009, uh, MBA, uh, there was no, there was no PM ship that time, right? You, you typically a, a very good career path was, uh, you start, start, start off with a sales stint, right. And, uh, that, that was the, the best thing to do if you're a marketing majors, right. You, you learn tricks of the trade, you do channel sales, hardcore sales, right. And then, then you basically, uh, go, grow on from there today. I'm, I'm glad like, uh, you know, a lot of efforts have been made and, and the ecosystem is responsible. I, I, I think tremendous, uh, kudos, uh, to the efforts, TPF, Suhas, you and your team are uh, taking, I think, uh, um, really, really speaks a lot in, uh, and really helps, uh, grow this community, uh, contribute to the community, uh, forums like these, I think 
I think these were not not even thought of um, two three years back, right? But I'm glad such forums, such platforms uh, do exist, uh, and and there is there are uh, sufficient forums, channels, platforms to be able to uh, reach out, connect. Um, so at least that's that's what is happening. Um, one one observation I think on again on both sides. Uh, 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 you know, I I think one one thing which is missing in the ecosystem and and which I don't think so we're doing enough of is uh, the the outside in thinking right. Uh, most of the times I think uh, people are just uh, you know including us we are we are just hustling we are trying to make sure features are being shipped uh, we're trying to make sure uh, business requirements are are being prioritized and uh, things are happening. I I don't think we are we're doing that uh, enough of. Uh, Customer, uh, you know, customer backwards, uh, customer inciting or 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 uh, reaching out to our uh, consumers, and more so during the pandemic lockdown, I think that's further uh, affected a lot because you I, you can't go and meet customers now, right? It's just very very difficult. So that's something which is which is I think missing uh, missing both uh, on both sides I've I've seen, and that that is something I would encourage everyone to speak a lot to your end customer whether whether it's your internal user if you're building a erp system let, let's say and you're building something for your internal users i think that's that's the person you should talk to the most if you're building something for uh, if you're in the saas space and you're building something for clients you should talk, you should talk to end, end users directly and and so on on the consumer side if you are if you're in the b2c space uh, go on, talk to consumers. There are there are enough insights to be uh, gained and enough problems to be solved. So yeah, that's that's. that's, that's yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I think that is a critical point, and I think that is also the stage where we are right now. You know, the first few years, like you mentioned, the history is great. Like Amazon only entered in thirteen, so effectively that is the start of the entire product culture. Maybe five seven years. See the valley; it's thirty years, twenty thirty years. Right, that's why. So, nascent, but we are getting into that place where, like you mentioned, a lot of product-related stuff happening. So, this is super critical now, right? Today is a day where a lot more senior people in the ecosystem, and so happy that you guys, you know, agreed to do this because lots of learning. This hundred minutes, whoever stayed back, this is crazy. Like you know, 120 minutes that we've spent together, but lots of learning packed in this. And uh, one thing that uh, I want to share with everyone else is also the learning that you know, uh, on this. Um, Right. And the way you, you know, really pushed for Anshul and I mean, to be part of it, the way you pushed it, like, I mean, not, I don't know whether it was by design or anything, it just shows like how, you know, as leaders, you love, you know, taking your team ahead. So I think internally we were discussing background, but would love to give a shout out to that. Lots for us to learn as well. And as volunteers, I think these small things that really help us, you know, small things like this that we can observe and learn from you guys. So thank you so much for taking out your time today, Anshul, Sanship, I mean, thank you so much. Uh, you've been, I think, so I would also add to this that, you know, you guys have actually spent a lot more time and, you know, for, for all of us as, as participants, as volunteers, this was amazing. Thank you so much for your time. Hope hope you guys enjoyed it as well. And this was useful. So, yeah, thanks once again. And uh, would love to invite Solai if you guys, if you have some closing thoughts, so uh, thanking all the attendees and anything that you'd like to share. Solai was coordinating all of this and handles the Teardown initiative with Alan. So would love for you to. Yeah, thanks, Suhas. Uh, so I would also like to thank all the mentors, Sanjeev, Naveen, and like a uh, great piece of information about mentorship and how like this getting evolved in Indian ecosystem. Like, um, uh, thanks for staying supportive all throughout this month. And uh, you know, uh, Sanjeev has been very kind enough to offer this interview opportunity for the product role. Also, there are a bunch of other roles available in the pharmacy. Check out the career section. You can also reach out to mentors in LinkedIn if possible. And uh, like there are some tech analytics and also UX openings in pharmacy. Right? Uh, use this opportunity to connect with mentors and like build that mentorship piece. That's uh, very important. Um, so for folks uh, who have stayed with us, like close to 35 folks are still here. Thanks for spending 2.5 hours uh, uh, with us. Right? So, like, yeah, close to 2.5 hours now. Uh, it was also a great event. Uh, thanks to everyone. And uh, uh, there are uh, links for the next year down there. And uh, join our Slack channel to get exclusive updates. Uh, and uh, have a nice rest of the day and start your work day. Thank you.
Awesome. Thanks so much. Thanks everyone for joining it, and we'll see you. If you guys have, if you still want to stick around, do stick around in the networking room. Yeah. Anshul, Sanjeev, Navin, if you guys want to just share some closing thoughts, we'll see you. No, thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot. I, I think great uh, initiative, and we had tons of fun. And thanks yeah. everyone for participating. Okay. Thank, thank you so much, guys. See. You. Thanks for putting those hours or, or over the weekends, late nights. I, I, I'm sure you guys also are. Are busy with other stuff and your regular jobs, but uh, just trying to put organize such such a forum and and the efforts behind it, I I think talks a lot, and and just a just a moment of appreciation to our participants, like Naveen was uh, saying right here. We in fact we had a tough time to be honest, yeah. Yeah. and and that 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 was the reason to see uh, four finalists and and two sparks. Uh, ideally, could be done three finalists and and three sparks, but. You know, we, we we really wanted to give uh, you know everyone a, a chance to present and uh, articulate the thoughts. Uh, you know, some of them were there in the deck. Some we thought you know maybe a double click on them would, would be helpful. And and the kind of depth and the kind of details that have come out, uh, I, trust me, it's it's no easy feat to be doing all of this in in fifteen days. Uh, okay. yeah, correct. In the Less details. Yeah. Yep. I, I I think it's it's a tremendous feat. Uh, all all uh, participants and especially the finalists. I think everyone putting together, right from the problem problem identification, breaking it down, talking to users, doing the the groundwork, homework, and and then then uh, uh, putting putting thoughts behind it. What what is the right solve? Uh, maybe some of you would have even have bounced it with few users or some colleagues or peers. And then putting everything together in a in a well packaged uh, slides, I think I, I think I think that's all there. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, yep. Yeah. With that, uh, Anshul, do you just want to do one quick statement? Because I thought maybe you want to say something and then. No, I think. Oh, sorry. Very uh, good idea. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So Thank thanks you. so much, guys. Thanks everyone who stuck around, and thanks so much to our mentors. We'll see you guys in the networking lab, and you guys in the backstage. Thanks once again. See you next Thank month. You. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.